guys, welcome to another tutorial. We're going to talk about planar tracking and we're going to recreate uh, the example you just saw uh, with the moving bicycle. So let's dive right into it. I've got a few assets here. First of all, the uh, PNGs for the bike and then over the bike parts and then the video file. I already set the in and out points to save some time. So let's drag that into the timeline and let's select it, right click and turn it into a fusion clip. Then we head over to the Fusion tab, like so, and we hit Ctrl space bar and add a planar tracker, like so. Uh, once there, in the tracker, we'll set it to a hybrid point area because in my experience, that tends to be a bit more accurate than the other uh, method. So the first thing we need to do is basically track the area or the pattern. Now, um, typically they will tell you quite rightfully that you need to first find the frame where the pattern is the least distorted, the biggest, etc. However, if, as I've worked with this file before, I know that the first uh, frame works just, just very nicely. So I'll do that. So I'll set the area. Uh, I'm doing it exactly the same as I will set the corner pin area to. Uh, doesn't need to be the case, but again, I've noticed that it works particularly well with this example. So uh, I set the reference time, frame zero is correct, so let's track forward. So that's done now, and uh, that worked out quite nicely. So let's go to the next step and set the operation mode to corner pin. And let's go back to the first frame and set our corner pin. Again, the first frame as that was our reference frame. Uh, let's move this along here. There we go, done. So let's see how well uh, the tracker works by adding a little text node and see if it sticks well to our tracker. So let's add it in here. I'll quickly switch to a single mode as well, single viewer mode, because I've seen on my system that sometimes when I have two viewports open, it uh, tends to slow down things and it introduces some glitches. It's probably just a local issue here, but in any case. Um, so we'll add the text here, add text. You can see it appearing there. Increase the size and just play and see how well it sticks. And that looks really good. Okay, so we can delete this. That was just a test. And we're going to focus on our bicycle. So to that end, we're first going to pull in the frame, the bike frame. So let's display that here, a very simple frame. Now you can see it is a square background, even though our area where we need to apply the corner pin to is more rectangular, more widescreen like. So what I do here, you can do this in multiple ways, but I'm just adding a background and piping, piping the media into the background. Uh, this will show us all black because the background is a solid black. So I just need to get the alpha down so that we see our bike frame again. So that's step number one. So that's good. Uh, next one up will be our bike wheel. And let's pipe that into the merge so that we'll create a new merge. And there we see our wheel. Now we need to position that correctly but before we do that, let's uh, just display the wheel itself, right? It looks good. I want to rotate that wheel before we do the whole positioning stuff because I want to just use the wheel once and then use it for the asset for both wheels. So let's add a transform here, right? And display that. And if I now adjust the angle, you see the wheel is spinning. So instead of keyframing it, I'd like to add a little expression. So right click expression. And as we saw, a negative angle will ensure the uh, wheel turns in a uh, clockwise direction. So I'm going to type in an expression minus time, right? So, and if I play it now, you see the wheel spinning. It's not quite fast enough. So I do a time something like 12. There we go, a spinning wheel. That's what we want to have. So that's looking good. So uh, next thing we want to do is rename this quickly to uh, rotation to make it easier to find later on. And that's looking good. And let's show the merge here. Again, this is in the wrong position. So I could 
change the position here in the merge but to keep things tidy I'm just going to add another transform after the rotation like so right and in the transform itself I'm going to move this right and I move it down a bit and there we go that's looking good uh, I'm going to copy over the Y position because I want to apply the same Y position to the other wheel we'll create so to create the other wheel, what we can basically do is branch off this rotation here. So add another transform, transform, pipe the rotation in there, and then pipe the transform into the output of the merge. And again, that will create a new merge. And there we see our second wheel. So all we need to do here then in this transform, move it to the right X position and then for the Y position, we just paste in the value we already had. There we go. And now, ta-da, an animated bike. So uh, next thing up, I'm just going to display the media out and I'm going to pipe this merge into the planar tracker. All right, so it will now be corner pinned to the area we specified. So if we play this, magic, it works. Uh, of course, the bicycle is black here because the asset is black. Now, we could, I could have created a white asset and everything and work with transfer modes, but let's work with what we've got, right? It's always good to, you know, ascertain different possibilities. So I want this bike to look a bit like this chalky outline here. So what I'm going to do is add a fast noise. A fast noise standard has got white in there, right? Uh, we want to increase the scaling a bit a bit more, set it to 80. And then we're going to pipe that into the output of the merge. And again, it will create a new merge where we're, and if I now display the media out or the uh, planar tracker, doesn't really matter. You can see the fast noise is uh, being imposed on top of the bike. Now, what we want to do is basically restrict that to in. So it's only showing where the bike is showing. So that's already looking a good, a, a good bit better, but it's not perfect yet, right? It's way too neat. So we need to work on the fast noise a bit. So let's increase the contrast a tad. The brightness down, maybe a bit less contrast. Something like this, right? It's looking fairly similar, maybe not perfect, but I think uh, maybe this doesn't make an awful lot of difference. Uh, yeah, I think that is looking uh, not quite good enough. Still a bit more contrast. So it's a bit of tweaking and everything, so I'll leave it for now. Um, but you know, if you've got a bit more time, you can always tweak it to your liking. So now it looks like this, and it's pretty good. But if we look closely, right, we see the noise is not, oops. We see the noise is not moving with the movement of the bicycle, of the wheels, it's fixed. That's basically because we applied the noise after we've rotated the wheel. So what we can do instead, right, is apply the noise before the rotation, i.e. here, and we would need to apply it then to both the frame and the wheel. So let's do that. Let's get rid of this merge and Get this over there and just add a merge here. And here as well. And let's pipe it into both that one and that one. But as with the other ones, we need to set the operating operator mode to in. In here and in here. And if we now look closely, oh, probably not the best frame to look but you see the noise is moving with it so that is pretty pretty good so the additional thing I want to do though before we start moving the bike itself is add a bit of blur after the merge note oops sorry control spacebar blur let's add it in between here if you hold the shift key then you can see you can just pop it in there. And we only need to apply a tiny bit of blur, maybe maybe two, two and a half pixels, 
something like that. So that is looking good. Okay. Uh, one more thing actually before we start moving the bike, we can also apply a little bit of motion blur to the wheels. Right? So if we go to the rotation here and go to the settings here and there you've got this tick box motion blur. Let's take that up to quality a bit and to six and let's have a look. Maybe difficult to see the difference, but you can see it off and on. That will help to sell the effect. So now we're nearly there really. So after the blur here, we want to move the bike. So as you would suspect, we can just add a transform tool, right? And in the transform tool, basically, oh, actually, before we do that, my apologies. Uh, we don't want this movement to start straight away. In the example you saw, at first it is static. And then once it's a few seconds in, then the bike, uh, the wheels will start spinning and the bike will start moving. So what we can do in the rotation itself and go, um, go back to uh, this tab here and we can put a condition, condition in here. And basically we first need to specify as, as of when we want the bike to start moving. Say we do it as of frame 75. So what we can do then is type IIF, so if, a bit of a weird notation, it's a Lua type notation, uh, IIF, open brackets, time greater than 75, then comma, uh, apply the rotation we had specified. So if the time is greater than 75, then start rotating. If it is not greater than, so i.e. if it's before frame 75, have a rotation of zero, comma, zero, close brackets. So if we play it now somewhere before frame 75, it's all static. And after frame 75, you can see it starts moving. Now onto the last, last step, go back to the transform tool. And here we could do this with, with an expression, but uh, in this case, it's actually easier to just keyframe it. So let's go to frame 75, go to the center point, right click and animate. That sets a first keyframe. And then go to something like maybe frame 115. And then we're going to apply our second keyframe by just moving it. So I'm hitting control, I'm pressing control as I go over the center point for X. And then clicking the mouse button and just dragging the mouse. And I'm hitting control or pressing control to have small increments, to have more control over it. Uh, so that was a bit too much. And there we go, bike has disappeared. So that's done really. And now all we need to do is go back to the edit tab, uh, do a little render, and then we can admire our work. So let's do that. So this has uh, finished. So let's have a quick look at our results. So let's put it on full screen. There you go, nothing's happening. And there we go, our, our bike is moving and disappearing. So that is looking pretty good. So uh, I, hope you, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial. I hope you guys learned something. Now, if you have any questions whatsoever uh, or any comments, uh, please drop me a line below this video or send me an email at ablackbirdcalledsu at gmail.com. And in the meantime, have a fantastic day. I will see you guys later. Take care, bye-bye.